Good morning YouTube, the lofty biker here. What delights have we got? We've come up to Plymouth, Ocean Plymouth. Richard's lent me a bike for the day. We got the not quite so big one, the R1250 RT. Beautiful brand new bike. Unfortunately it's not got the cruise and um, the adaptive cruise, but it's got everything else on, all the bells and whistles. Let's get my helmet on, I'll see you in a minute. So there you have it YouTube, the 2022 R1250RT, a bit lighter than the old model, like I said in the, the intro, it's, unfortunately there's no uh, adaptive cruise on this, but it's not to worry, not to worry. So here we are YouTube, we take a right up the hill, first impressions The seat's a little bit low for me, but I do believe they do a high seat version. Finish is lovely, beautiful, beautiful blue. We've got the big ten and a quarter screen. Everything's in the right places. If you've driven a BM of virtually any kind, the switch gear will be very familiar to you. Nice and easy, beautiful. I do find these under the bar mirrors take a bit of getting used to, but when you do, they're very, very good. The pots are immediately against my shin. So it's funny because some bikes you notice it more than others. I notice it when I've got crash bars on the RS, but this has got like a shroud. I'll show you on the walk over. The walk round, sorry. Be interesting to see if uh, they've made any advancements with the quick shifter. It's like all the 1250 engines, the tap pitch is quieter, but there's like a high pitch. I don't know how to describe it. It's not a jingle as such, but there's like a high, high, high pitch noise. You probably know if you ride one. Of course, we've got the electric screen on this one. Anyway, I'll clear the traffic and I'll let you know what's happening. So I've engaged the head old, see what it's like. Oh, it's lovely. Very smooth. Works well. So here we are, YouTube. We're just approaching the 386. The Tavistock Road. Cracking road. We're going to take a right onto the main road here. We're going to go up a small way and then we're going to turn off and cut round the lanes. Round we go. Drops in quite nicely. It's fairly heavy on the front end. So I'm just going to take a right following the road and then we're going to do a duck off to the right down New Road. And we'll test out this uh, quick shifter. Or as the Bavarians call it the gear assist pro here we are steady it on the back brake so we're in first gear down the hill here we go yeah first to seconds a bit clunky but after that it's not bad at all so we're staying second, here we go. 25, 30 mile an hour roll on. Yeah, instant pickup. Very, very nice. So we've got nothing behind us, we're in third gear, let's just test the back brake out. Yeah, good steadier. Not so much a stopper as a steadier, works quite well. Third gear again, get it up to 40, nobody behind, front brake. Superb. So away we go. A little bit quicker this time. I'm going to get it in third gear doing 50. Here we go. Nothing about. Brakes on. 
Yeah, you can feel the ABS clicking in slightly, but in general, it's pretty good. Shoots up to six. It's a, well, let's face it, this is a fantastic engine. What they've done over the years to refine this boxer engine is just sublime. You know, it, it is the pinnacle of engineering to get this to this state. Unfortunately, they'll probably have to go all the way to full water cooling if they go any bigger. There's talk of the 1300 coming out. So here we go, third at 30. Past the barracks. Feel the input. Yeah, you don't need a lot of input. And the steering, steering's very, very light, of course. We've got telelever on the front and paralever on the back. Little bit of breakage. Into second. Take the left. Down the little lane. Here we go. I'm not exactly sure what the suspension's in, but... Um, it's fairly compliant, it's handling these bumps really well. Here's the bend, bang them on, tip it in, round it goes, up to the bridge and down. It's a nice place to be. The actual cutaway in the tank is probably a little bit short for my long legs. I should say anybody up to about six foot two and find this extremely comfortable. Um, of course, I'm six five. It's just that little bit tighter in the knee area, but it's nice. Whether the taller seat would make a difference, I'm not 100% certain. Steady's well on the back brake. Here we go up the lane. Third gear. Back in a second, drop it in. Yeah, it's a lovely bike this. It's so easy to just get on it and ride. I know it looks like it's 10 ton Tessie when you stand and see it or when you lift it off the centre stand. But to be honest, once you're rolling, once you're riding the bike, it's no different to the others. It does feel that little bit lighter than the, the K16 GT, but it does also feel a little bit more cramped. But that's not a problem. Put the brakes on. Holding a line. Colin, our club chairman's got an RT and he does chuck it about a bit. And I can understand why, because even on these little roads in Devon, it handles well. It does help though when you know you've got some good stoppers. When you put them brakes on it brings you big beast to it. A halt quite quickly. I've got to say this is a lovely road. So here we go, third gear, drop it down to 30. Let's put the cruise on, see what it's like. So even at 26 it, the cruise dropped in. Nice. So we're doing smack on 30 mile an hour. Holding nice, nice, nice cruise control, yeah. Tolls the speed well. You set it at 30, it does 30. Here's the old delivery van, Mr. Gardner. 
I've, got, I've probably said it before, I do think the BMW Cruise is probably one of the best cruise controls. It's very accurate. Whether it's uphill, whether it's downhill, you set it and it goes and it works. It's a shame we've not got the adaptive on this, I would like to have tested that out. I believe it's a £500 option. I suppose if you're spending 21 grand on a bike, 500 quid's neither here nor there, is it? Just a bit of breakage. Bit. I could see something in the road, I wasn't sure what it was. So down the hill. Here we go, back in a 40. Over the cattle grid. But he's one, one of the little blighters in the road. He's just going to saunter across. I'm going, he says, I'm going. Always best to be safe than sorry when the sheep are about, you don't want to frighten them. It's not quite so sunny as it has been, but it's lovely. Still 20 odd degrees, 21 degrees, it's beautiful. I must admit the views from up here are absolutely amazing. It's a beautiful place. I'm going to pull over in a second and let you have a look at it. Here's a nice little lay by, we'll pull over here. How you doing folks, it's the lofty biker here, we're up at Plymouth, look at this beauty, look at this, what a colour, what a beautiful blue, a sling leg over it, there you go, feels lovely, feels ever so comfortable, I've got the side stand down, I've just put my leg up, I'll show you what I mean, so the cutaway's right there, so there I'm just about in it, just about, only just, any longer with the leg and you would struggle. When I come on my toes it's a little bit better. This is what I was just saying, this, this shroud or cowling, whatever you call it, around the pot, when I'm putting my feet down, bang, straight in my knee there, which is quite weird. Right, switch it on. Let's have a quick listen. So there you have it, let's have a walk around. It's a bit breezy. It's a big front in it, big front end, beautiful lights. I've got to say, I do like it, I do like this colour, I think this blue is lovely. Nice big back end on it. Let's have a look what we've got. So there's the big dash, the big ten and a quarter. How about that? It's gorgeous, isn't it? Keyless, we've got keyless ride on this one. Speakers for the stereo system, I ain't gonna bother with on that. So we've got adjustable levers, we've got central locking, we've got the mode button, start stop, SOS, little power let, cubby hole. This one, I'll just move the steering wheel. This one's for your telephone. I don't know what sort of size it is. There's your USB connection, not bad. Just turn it the other way, and we've got another one the other side, much bigger, well not so long but quite deep, ideal for change bits and pieces. So just coming across, standard cruise control, hazard warnings, this position here is where the adaptive cruise control goes. We've got the screen, here we go, let's lift it up. It's like a barn door in it, look at the size of that, and down. Impressive. It is a big screen. Menu button, that's for going into your modes or whatever, the whiz wheel. Indicators, lights. Now down the side here we've got four uh, bespoke buttons. Now you can set it for different things, you can set it for the suspension or the grips or whatever you want and it will switch everything on. Pretty damn good really isn't it? Pretty damn good. Shall we go through the specs? I'll tell you exactly what we've got. So, this is the 2022 BMW R1250 
RT. 1254cc air liquid cool. Four stroke flat twin. This latest 1250 engine throws out 136 brake horsepower at 7750 revs and it gives a very healthy 105 foot pound at 7750 revs. It's a big beast, 279 kilos wet. Now I'm not sure that's including the panniers or not, you'd have to look at the book for that, but it's a big beast. We've got a seat height of 805, which I'd class as pretty damned average. I've told you about the Sturt screen, it's a 10.25 inch TFT with full connectivity. You no longer need a dedicated sat nav, you just download the, the app off BMW site, connect it from your phone, bingo away you go and you can split the screen in half, you can have the standard screen with the revs and the taco on left and you can have the turn by turn sat nav on the right which is pretty good isn't it. This comes with ABS Pro, dynamic cruise control, dynamic traction control, it's got three road modes, hill start, 25 litres of fuel, I've, I believe that we've got a usable 4 litre reserve which is around a gallon, not bad at all. We've got a telelever on the front, not sure whether you can see but running Brembo's, there's your telelever on the front and we've got a 17017 on the front with three, 320 odd mil discs, Brembo twin calipers, very nice. So we come round, single sided swinging arm of course, shaft drive, there's the carden shaft on this side, Brembo's on the back as well, we're running a 180 on the rear. Pretty standard rubber, pretty standard fare, what do you think? I think it's a lovely looking bike, I do like the blue. It's got the big RT logo down the side, look at that, superb. So what's it going to cost you? I went on the website and I did a bit of configuring. To be fair, to configure it how you'd want it, if you were going to buy this bike, you're talking 21 grand. 21 big uns, a lot of money, a lot of bike. Is it as good as the GT, the 16? I don't know, they're different. Some people say, why have they got two big tourers in the range? They are different, they are totally different bikes. Although this one will pick its skirt up and go, it certainly won't go like the K16. The K16 has got, I would say, 20% more sport. Anyway, I'm gonna get my helmet on, take it a raz down the hill back home, and enjoy myself. I'll see you in a minute. Okay, here we are. One thing I forgot to tell you, listen to the horn. It's the same as the one on the K1600. That's an horn. I don't care what anybody says. Anyway, let's get in a position to pull away steady and safely. Okay, we're all clear. Let's go. We're still in the 40. That's why there's sheep everywhere. I bet this used to be a fabulous road before there was a 40 limit. It's still good fun. Oh yeah, look at this. Old MG. MG Midget, beautiful. The gearbox is slick, I've got to say that. I think personally, these big buzzes, when you're just tatting around and taking your time, I think you're better off using the clutch, really do. I don't see any point in whatsoever in using the quick shifter, unless you gain it up to about four or five thousand revs at least, and that's when the quick shifter really comes into its own. So like I say, I'd first to second nice and steady, drop it into third, then when you start accelerating, bash, give it the old quick shifter, and you won't be disappointed. So we're just going down here, round the bend, and we'll take a right and dip down the roller coaster road. It's a little bit windier than it has been. Hope the sound's coming through okay. Let's just get the screen up just a touch. Well, there you go, that's that little bit quieter. I'm not sure whether you can notice the difference with the mic, but uh, I can really notice the difference of the wind round my head. Now, if you did come and do this road, you can go straight on here. That's a cracking road, 
but I'm going to take the right here and do a duck off down the hill into Plimpton of course so we're dropping into a 30 another sheep so we'll hold a steady 30 let the cruise control take the strain the bracken's just starting to turn now you can tell we're coming to the end of the season a little bit drop a cog round we go another sheep fast asleep by the side of the road I think it's most sheep I've seen on this stretch I'll just drop the screen down again so as you can see the road it's not so much fun looking through a screen is it here we go again some more sheepies fairly tame aren't they Like I've said before, new layout ahead. It's all a new layout for me. Here we go, National. Let's squeeze it a bit then. Yeah, that quick shift is superb. So we're doing 60 in the National. Over the cattle grid, so the one good thing is there'll be no more sheep. Holding a steady 60, I've got the cruise on. Look at that screen, isn't that screen amazing? Anyway, we'll follow the road down. Holds a beautiful line, national speed limit all the way around. Put the screen up again. There you go. Nice clean air. Very, very effective this screen. Move out. These big bikes certainly handle far, far better than I've entitled to. Road narrows a little bit here. We're nearly on the downhill stretch. Is that what you'd reckon, YouTube? I think if you was in the market for a £21,000 tourer, where you could put all your luggage on, carry whatever you like, put the wife on the back, go touring anywhere you wanted they probably don't come much better than this extremely smooth very plush lovely suspension I suppose in some ways you could say they lack a little bit of character because they're so smooth but it's each to their own I think it's a lovely bike and if somebody said to me take that bike to the south of Spain tomorrow I'd get on it and I'd feel ever so keen ever so I would feel well at home and looking forward to the journey and I wouldn't think twice or bat an eyelid. You could take this in the mountains, round the twisties, anywhere you wanted to go. You can see why it's been such a stalwart in the BMW range all these years. It does a bit of everything, it's just a bit big. Would it be my choice of motorcycle? I think I'd have one if I could get one at the right price. But at the end of the day, if you're buying a full-on, full-dress tourer like this, you've got to do a lot of touring. I think for day-to-day -day use and the occasional tour, there's probably more suitable bikes. But saying that, this is a lovely piece of kit. 
beautifully balanced. Anyway, I'm now nearly down into Plimpton. You don't want to see all the bits in the traffic. If you've enjoyed the video and you'd like to see some more, subscribe. Click on the like button. Ring the bell so as you get notifications. All that stuff's really good for the channel and helps me to build it. If you ask a question about it, I'm only too pleased to answer it. Anyway, this is the Lofty Biker saying, Ta-ra for now. Ta-ra.